the gateway to bourbon country in Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome to the Firkin Podcast, where every drink tells a story. I'm Brian. I'm Chris. What is going on, Brian? Chris, we're back. We are back. It is season two, and I am so excited to be here. Uh, we've already, we've actually already done. That's like, right. Like a live season two. We haven't posted that yet. That's going to come soon. But we haven't been back in the studio until today. Today. And we have new equipment. So Lots hopefully equipment. if you're doing your job correctly, <laughs> this should look even better than it did before. So uh, what what did you do while you were, uh, while we were off? Because <laughs> we took, we took, um, we finished last year yep. with Bourbon and Beyond. That's right. Uh, four live shows, four <laughs> straight days. We, we, we worked a lot. <laughs> That was weekend. that was that was crazy, man. But I'll tell you I had, what, I had such a good incredible. time. Incredible. Um, I, I just had an absolutely amazing time. We had uh, a lot of celebrity guests on, like Haley Withers. That's all right. She was incredible. We had uh, Ian Summerholder and Paul Wesley on. People do know those guys from maybe the Vampire Diaries. Yeah, I think more so. More than Brothers Bond. You know, you know what I, you know what I understood in that. I don't think anybody listened to us. <laughs> yeah, they, they they didn't. My uh, guess is everybody was like, yeah. "Will they tell the two people in the middle to shut up?" Because <laughs> then let, yeah, let, the, let, let the let the pretty guys talk Get for just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else did we have on? Uh, we had Steven Wilson Jr. Yes, and I'll tell you what, man, he is on fire right he is now. He's crushing it. Uh, he was just on, I think he was on uh, Jimmy Fallon the yep. other night. That's like, right. They're on, uh, unbelievable. Haley Withers, unfortunately, she did not win the CMA for the year, but she was yeah. up against Jelly Roll. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, that's a, that is a tough, uh, is tough, a tough category. One. We had so much fun, and then that was that was why we had to take a break. Yep. Um, like we were exhausted. Too much and we fun. Needed three months off. Too much fun. You um, need a few but, months to get <laughs> keep going. But you know, you know, uh, you know who I worked with El- while I was also there. I got to work with one of our uh, original, our very first episode guests. That's right, Chef Amanda, Amanda Freitag. Freitag yeah. She was incredible. I got to work with Chris Santos, yep. Chef Chris Santos. I got to work with Chef Ed Lee, and then here's the kicker, dude. You know who I got to work with? Like. Echelon of a star. Tell me. Wayne Newton. <laughs> That's right. You yeah. did have Wayne Newton. And you know what? Stage. I'm pretty sure we even called him <laughs> out in our very first ever promo. Yeah. And I was like, that was the person we had to see. And I got to you know, work with Wayne Newton. You're right about that. Yeah. We did. So that was so, that's so much fun. It was really cool, though, running into Amanda again. I hadn't seen her since, uh, since we did the show. Yeah, and she comes right up and she's like, "Brian," she gives me a big hug, and I was like, "Dude, this is great! What I, a sweetheart, man! She's um, awesome." The Fry Tag Cocktails is now a uh, sponsor of the show. Yeah, so we are going to be having this year. We got some uh, really great things planned. We're going to have Fry Tag Cocktails with a couple guests yeah, throughout yeah. the yep. year, so that'll be a lot of fun, as well as a lot of other great things we have lined up for this year. What are what are <laughs> some of the new things we got, things, Brian? We have a lot of things in our brains. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, that. it's can we execute? <laughs> That's the main goal. Can we? can we execute and god <laughs> i don't know we'll see it's, One, it took like three and a half hours to get the studio set back up it, it did <laughs> three and a half hours in two days we were just out of practice <laughs> like, a little yeah, bit a little uh, bit but we have a lot more equipment there too yeah so the uh i think the thing i'm most excited about this season is a focus on doing some live shows out there oh uh, yeah uh, i love the live around shows. town and maybe elsewhere if we can get out yeah, traveling around, uh, a lot of other media type of stuff that we have kind of planned and yeah. worked up. Uh, some more celebrity guests this year. Yeah, absolutely. We really need some sports stars that we have. Uh, we're going to have some musicians That's on. That's right. Um, more master distillers and winemakers and, uh, you know, bartenders brewers and bartenders. Yeah. Yes. Uh, some more people from, you know, city of Louisville and the state of Kentucky and things yep. like that. We got some great feedback from some of our um uh, past guests like mayor fisher um, oh absolutely awesome uh one of my dear friends i get a lot of feedback on which was uh dan calloway yep love that guy i got to see him last night by the way oh did you funny dan calloway you say um he was one of our guests i saw him at bourbon and beyond that bourbon and beyond was an amazing it was like a reunion show for us almost because of all the people that were there yes that we that we had it's seen apparently previously. the only people that we know <laughs> <laughs> but that's the past and now yes Hey, we're in the present now. Hey, you know what's going on here in uh, in town uh, this weekend is the Bourbon Classic. It's uh, right. I don't know a whole lot about the history of that event itself, but um, it's been going on a few years now. An annual event that uh, you do some uh, bourbon and food pairings. Yeah, so um, I, I can't go into everything to do. The Bourbon Classic is is huge. Yeah. It's a it's a multi day event. I think it starts like Wednesday or Tuesday, yep. and it starts out with like classes. Like <clears throat> they'll they'll travel on to gr- groups of people to distilleries and try incredible spirits. You know. 
know, that okay, just yeah. can't find. Um, get to learn a lot. Getting to, uh, they have dinner set up with like master distillers like Freddie and Fred No. Oh, that's yeah, really I saw neat. that was last night. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that was a, that's a really, really cool thing. <clears throat> they also have um, last night, which I did not go to this. It's one that I usually go to every year, but I could not make it uh, <laughs> last night because I did something else last night. <laughs> but, um, oh, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we, we will absolutely <laughs> talk about that. But it was uh, the Bourbon Classic, which is the cocktail competition. So yeah. that is a really neat thing where they pair a bartender with kind of like a uh, restaurant. Yep. Um, right. Restaurant, famous, some of the local celebrity chefs, some of our great celebrity chefs are mm-hmm. right there. Uh, then they go through and they pair the food yep. and the cocktails together. And then that's what they actually go through and they have a, the judge of the winner. I've not seen who the winner is yet. Um, cannot wait. I'm sure we'll find out tonight. Yeah. We're going tonight to the Bourbon Classic. Tonight. Right. Which is Taste. Uh that is without all the cocktails we get to go through and taste a lot of great whiskey. Some uh, of our great local restaurants here in Louisville. So Last year we went to that uh, competition, mm-hmm. and uh, I, lo- I love cocktails. They're they're fine, but sometimes they get a little out there, Dude. and you don't know what you're getting. Dude, <laughs> you take that drink. And you're like, what in the world? I'll tell you, man. Bartenders, <laughs> bartenders are artists, man. For some of the stuff that they put in cocktails Absolutely. and things like that, you know, we have a really good friend of the show, Lily. Uh, yep. I, she, if you ever follow her, Lily, the bartender, go and like watch some of the drinks and some of the stuff that she creates and stuff like that. I, I love to drink, but man, how they put stuff like that together. She was the uh, she she took home the prize uh, at Bourbon and Beyond for the best cocktail. In that in that panel, the uh, uh, badass bartenders, badass bartenders, badass bartenders. Yeah, that's, that's what we it. got. Yeah, because uh, you know, back in the, I uh, wish I would have looked this date up. I think it was back in the sixties or fifties or sixties. Women weren't allowed to be bartenders. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Uh, and remember, Come this on. is not a show based off historic facts. We are not history. So if I'm off like 10, 15 years, comment and tell <laughs> sure, me. And do I, it. And I'm going to be honest, I still won't care. <laughs> I, d- I dare you. <laughs> yeah. I dare you. Send please, it in. Send please it in. send it in. Tell me the exact date. <laughs> it's just fine. But I do want to talk about because um, so we started setting up yesterday so that we would have a, a head start. And uh, Chris had to get out of here at yes. a certain time because he had somebody picking him up and he didn't know where he was going uh and i was like crazy okay well i hope i see you tomorrow (laughs) Uh, turn on location services why don't you bring us up to speed on what happened to you last night yeah so i got (laughs) invited um to this uh really incredible event called um house of bargetown all right uh, it is put on by Bargetown Bourbon Company, and it was spectacular. So uh, you get the invitation, you go through and you sign up. Uh, seats were limited. And what we got to do is uh, we went and I signed up, like let them know I was there. Uh-huh. And then I just stood in the line. And while you waited for a bus with tinted windows just to show up. <laughs> sure, why wouldn't you? They tell you nothing, <laughs> literally nothing, that other than they give you a cocktail. <laughs> And then you stand in line and you just wait for a bus to pick you up. Cool. <laughs> and we'll not tell you where it's go- where it's going, which is, I think, is hilarious that all of us bourbon nerds right. are like, just the promise of whiskey will get us on a strange bus <laughs> <laughs> to to promises of more whiskey. Hmm. So I think we, they told us about that when we were children. <laughs> yeah. No. Apparently, we just didn't listen as adults. <laughs> so where we went downhill. So we go and uh, we get on this bus takes us to this beautiful, beautiful neighborhood uh, right over off of River Road. Uh-huh. Um, it's kind of these unbelievable houses, like mansions. Um, so you get in, and they rented this whole entire house. So as soon as, soon as we pull up, uh, this like guy jumps on the bus real fast, and he's, he's your uh, butler. And yeah. he goes through, and he's telling you the whole entire experience. Like, he is in full-blown character. He's over the top. Uh, just, just awesome. <laughs> you get off the bus, and right before you walk in, everybody gets a key. And okay, they're saying, "Hey, welcome home. You're here." Every single room had a cocktail, had a food pairing. Um, it was an absolute blast. There Damn. was a DJ at one room. There was like Caribbean music and stuff like that. And Bargetown was using their um, Foursquare rum 
rum finished bourbon yeah. in that room and like these co- like my tie top cocktails unreal then you go into this other like playboy type room where they have like cool jazz dark lights it's like red you know red and dark right. lighting inside um espresso martinis and stuff hmm. in there that was a Damn. really really cool then downstairs they have a whole blending lab set up where you had our buddy dan no calloway shit. yeah dan right. calloway's down there kind of showing what he just does which is that mad scientist of a man yeah. there I, whatever um going through every little station has a little different of a blending area right uh, un- unbelievable dude i was there until the last bus it was so <laughs> much fun got to see a couple other friends of the show um which I, it does make it seem like we only know six people but mm. um christian huber uh he was oh yeah he right. was there dana huber ted huber uh they were all there uh john was there from peerless oh john yeah. Wado. Yeah. all right yeah. cool. he was nice. there uh steven van zant university of louisville basketball yep. team um he, he was there gosh i mean it was oh, that's cool well it's interesting because you know um Dan, when he was on the show, he was talking about bringing those bourbon experiences to downtown Louisville, and he did it, man. it looks like mission accomplished. He did it, uh, and I, I got to give credit to like the whole Bardstown Bourbon Company team. Uh, my buddy Brandon Smith there, I know he was a real big, intricate part of putting that whole entire thing together, but I'll tell you, I've just I've done so many types of experience, and this was just something different, just something epic, and it's going to, if any, any of our listeners, it's going to... Dallas, I think, next, and Nashville. Um, oh. It's two nights. That's all it is, and then it's over. If you have a chance to get a ticket to that, you've got to experience it. It's just it's second to none. Wow, second to incredible. none, man. Really, really good. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. And you um, showed back up. I did I did show back up. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you, that with the amount of alcohol that they were feeding you there, <laughs> I could clearly see how I wouldn't have shown back up. <laughs> Like, I can tell you, man, that was that was an interesting experience. Very good. Um, but I've, I've never done anything else like it. That was just a whole lot of fun. Excellent, man. That's awesome. So, yeah, we've we've taken a little while off, but we haven't been completely uh, completely lazy. Nope. Um, earlier Not this all. month, we did a uh, we had a nice. I produced it, and you you hosted it. Uh, the Whiskey Row Speaker Series. The yes. Row Speaker Series. Yeah, man. Uh, number fifteen, a uh, local bar here in Lua, like a local event venue, sports bar type of like it's five floors. Yeah. Um, got, it a pen, is. got a penthouse <laughs> on top. You got to see what that looks sure like. Did. It was so awesome. Um, it's nice up there. Yeah, uh, got an awesome stage and everything. But they asked me uh, a while ago. They said, "Hey, uh, would you be interested in hosting a whiskey?" speaker series and it's like i mean that sounds awesome like what what's your idea and i said oh you know we'll bring uh some master distiller stuff like that we'll tell the history of whiskey row get their stories and then they'll pay for pours and i had one condition when i did it um because you know as i've talked many times on this show and stuff like that i'm a firm believer like whiskey should be for everybody prices need to be reasonable things like that and um that's that was one of the conditions of if we were going to pour some great whiskeys uh then they had to be affordable for people to try right. so uh they were absolutely there with me that wasn't even up for discussion boom they were that was it and so uh our very first person that we had was Julian Van Winkle yep like hello what a way to start a whiskey <laughs> series off with. Uh, let's just bring the mythical legend sure, that not? is Julian. Um, we had Julian Van Winkle. We had Andrew Calloway, who is the uh, whiskey and mm-hmm. um, Indian Indian whiskey and American whiskey ambassador, I think, for, I think right. or director Sazerac. Right. for yeah. Sazerac. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry, Andrew, if I, if I butchered your title, buddy. It was long, <laughs> and I prom- it's just as impressive as it sounds. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we got to bring him, and then uh, my buddy Preston Van Winkle, we yep. got to bring him up. And it was a whole 45-minute hour chat of just getting to sit up there and chat with these like legendary whiskey guys telling Super stories. cool, man. And if you know number 15, number 15 is in the heart of Whiskey Row. The building was back in like 1899. It used to be Weller and Sons, right. which is where Pappy Van Winkle actually got his start uh, selling pretty much medicinal whiskey from there before uh, they left that building and went over to the Shively to Distillery, well, there you go. Um, which is where a lot of the Pappy and kind of the old Fitzgeralds and stuff like that that yeah. people know um, that was coming out of there, late 70s, stuff like that, before the distillery shut down. So One of the cool things that people will want to experience that in person, uh, you get nice discounted pours. I had a couple of really cool pours. Yes. I didn't get the Pappy because that one was... 
That one was up there. And it was. It was. And uh, uh, I do want to call that out. It was $75 a pour, which is up there, but it's pappy. Yeah. I mean, it's pappy. But here's the thing. That's not a crazy amount for two reasons. First off, any place that you go get a pour of Pappy Van Winkle of any of those type of bottles up there. I mean, you're spending much more than that mm-hmm. for the most part. But all of those proceeds of that bottle... All of those proceeds, that bottle went to Rooting for Robert. That's right. Um, which was a charity that Julian Van Winkle did. Julian donated that bottle, and we sold every single pour from that bottle That's by awesome. the end of the night. So uh, that we is raised badass, you know, dude. roughly, what, $2,000 plus yeah. dollars or so for Rooting for Robert. And we're going to do the same thing uh, March 7th. I'm doing it again. Well, you're going to be producing it for yeah. me again. We're doing uh, the Historic Whiskey Row Speaker Series. And this time, I got Freddie No. Eighth generation master distiller from Beam Suntory. Uh, he does his own thing, Hardens Creek, um, Little Book. You talk about like that's new school distilling. Yeah. So, like, we're going complete opposite, man. We have mythical legend, and now we got this new school, like, with this eighth generation master distilling. And I'll tell you, man, if you've ever talked to Freddie or ever heard anything with Freddie, he's fun, man. This that's is, cool. Like, I don't even know if I have to do any prep work because Freddie might not even let me talk. I'm not sure. <laughs> if you guys didn't get a chance to check out that first one, come over to our, our YouTube mm-hmm. page, uh, youtube.com slash at Firkin Podcast. I've got that posted up there. You can watch the entire thing and uh, drink along at home. Also, um, with this, with this Freddie No, uh, the tickets are $5, so $7 mm-hmm. after taxes. Um, but all of the proceeds of that are going to go to the Jack Harlow Foundation. So um, we just, hey, man. somebody told me the other day, just like to really get in the same room with these guys over at Beam. I mean, it's it's up there, man. It's triple digits to get up there. Like, oh, these yeah. are rock stars of the whiskey world, and you get to do it for 7 bucks and Unfortunately, I'll be there too. Uh, that's hey, where it goes down. That's why it's seven dollars. Yeah. <laughs> is because I'm there. <laughs> you know what else is five dollars? What you got? Our base footlongs. Uh, no, our base <laughs> Patreon membership is five. It is five dollars. So uh, if you want to hear a couple of buffoons that sit around talking, that's right. Go to Patreon.com/slash Firkin Podcast. Yeah, because Brian needs a new stool. <laughs> I do. <laughs> like My bolts really are falling off. And Chris needs to learn to not <laughs> stare at the monitor in front of him. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff coming up, and. Uh, Again, they're looming in September. A couple of big ass festivals. Yeah, and so normally we wouldn't even talk about this yet because uh, they usually don't make the announcements yeah. for like much later in the year. I think last year was like April. That's right. Bourbon and Beyond. That's right. Was just announced uh, like two, three weeks ago, and mm-hmm. Louder was announced yes or on Wednesday of yep. this week. Um, so let's. Uh, we weren't going to talk about this much, but I mean, we have to when you see the lineups like this. So we just wanted to let's call out some like, like some big, uh, some big names, big names. <laughs> like this might be this Bourbon and Beyond. There is something for everybody at this show. It's like ridiculous. It's unreal, lineup. man. So let's start out with the biggest headliner, Zach Bryan. Yeah. Like, I've been listening to him a little bit here lately because my kids started picking him up. Mm-hmm. And uh guy's awesome. He, he his, uh, his vocal, like, this raspy-ish, like, uh-huh. I don't know, man. It's like this mix between this country and folkish. And yeah, it's just this, so this straight good. Americana goodness. So that, good. Let's name another big one. Dave Matthews Band. Dave Matthews Band, which took me by surprise because I was not expecting to see that one on right? the list. Dave Matthews Band. Never seen him? Uh, I'll go check it out. Massive, massive Kentucky superstar. He yeah. is absolutely on fire. He's everywhere. Tyler Childers coming right here to Louisville. He is on fire. Like, he's, he's everywhere. He's yeah. absolutely everywhere. Now, this one's fun. Now, this one, uh, Chris calls me up and he's like, yo, check us out. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because Neil Young is coming Neil to Neil Young, dude. Neil Young. <laughs> like, what? I- I'll tell you, man, this is like, there's so many bucket list bands on here. It's hard <laughs> to even say which one, like what day you want to go or anything like that. Like, to yeah. me, this is, you're going all four days. Pretty much. Like, right? You you have to go all four days. Yeah. Um, one of my absolute favorite artists, like when I, growing up, uh, I've followed him for years. He has done just like every album is always different. Every album. Every, <laughs> every album. They're, like, you, you couldn't put a bad You movies. can't deny that because I tried to get my kid to listen to him and uh, couldn't pick an album because I was like, what? which one? Yeah, because here's the thing. If you get hooked to this artist, the next album may not be your style. <laughs> it comes right. out. Like, it's weird. But that is Beck. Uh, Beck absolutely. Man himself. Gosh, I love Beck. Uh, we have Matchbox 20. You yeah. know, he, uh, they're really in the news with the Barbie movie lately with that song oh, that they're that's playing. Right. 
yeah. push uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I play like so on fire with Matchbox 20 uh, another Louisville 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 band here we have my morning jacket <laughs> um, that that is absolutely unreal now let's talk about some weird ones that pop up out of here that like this is why there's something for everybody the beach boys the beach boys like right. love coming man yes like that's that's really <laughs> really cool like uh the beach boys are going to be here we have chris isaac mm. chris isaac's going to be here like w- didn't expect w- him to like, pop up. <laughs> are, are you expecting any of these <laughs> like like who did you expect we got cody jinx uh that's on here you have some other like uh really uh, hidden the ones. wallflowers the wallflowers yeah. yes I'm super jacob dylan that man that's gonna yep. be so cool um yeah, the Wallfires are really, really good. The Bacon Brothers. The Bacon Brothers. The bra- yeah. For anybody who doesn't know, the Bacon Brothers, <laughs> that's Kevin Bacon. That's Kevin. It's Kevin Bacon. There he is. Like, we are, Look at that. does that, you know what I figured out the other day? What's that? We are now one degree. <laughs> one degree. One degree. Yeah. Chef Amanda Freitag has cooked for <laughs> that's Kevin Bacon. Right, yes, that's so, right. So, and that was recent. So that's what's really neat. So, <laughs> we are now one degree removed from Kevin Bacon. This is incredible, guys. Like, how cool is that? I mean, um, I think we made it. I'd like to get to zero degrees. So, Kevin, <laughs> if you're listening, <clears throat> and come over to the stage, say hi. That'd be really neat. Well, well the war on drugs is coming. The war on drugs. That's yeah. right. Yes, and that's absolutely. Be an awesome show. Dinosaur Junior. Dinosaur Junior. That's really yeah. neat. I mean, the the thing is, is like you really have to dig in because there's so many bands that are just like buried in here. And we'll be there. We'll be hanging around out there. We will. Um, and actually, just uh, just to call it out again, I am on the poster. Yeah. The very so very look bottom. down there at the bottom. <laughs> very at the very him. bottom, and the and it says Chris <laughs> Blanford on there. Um. Which is just uh, really neat. I'm ex- extremely excited about that. Yeah, if anybody out there has any suggestions, comments, that uh, things that you'd like to see, maybe some behind-the-scenes stuff from Bourbon and Beyond, hit us up. Yes. Uh, come over to Instagram. Find us at Firkin Podcast. Or come to FirkinPodcast.com and let us know some things that you guys want to see because we want to hear from you. We would like to hear from them. That'd be nice. You know what else we'd like to hear? What? For them to go to the Patreon account. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very the people on YouTube might have noticed we did put a little backlighting here. Yeah, and, uh, we've done... we're, ex- we're expecting mm-hmm. to uh, ex- extend that out a little bit. Yeah, the the more Patreon that you keep going, the more our mm. set will increase. Well, you get tell prettier you and prettier. <clears throat> Actually, you are the one who is paying for quality. The more money you give us, That's, the higher the quality. You know, you're right about that, Chris. So <laughs> if anybody saying. has any complaints on the quality, well, eh, yeah, hey, if you're complaining you're like audio's off a little bit, eh? We need more <laughs> money for a better setup. Like I, I don't know, like uh, maybe Brian needs a new mixing board. I you don't know, know that's what Brian a, needs. That's a funny thing you bring up, right? Yeah. Because uh, so yeah, we did our we did our first show live from Bellarmine, yes, and boy, did we have some technical difficulties there for about four minutes, and uh, the people that. Uh, actually, tune now, in let me on that let podcast. me let me just preface that real fast. We've done multiple live shows. That's right, we have with zero <laughs> audio issue. Okay, that's right. Now go ahead with your story. So uh, we thought we had a sound guy, but it turns out uh, he wasn't really planning on doing sound for us, and so we had to take this little. Uh, I, I record on a portable uh, H8, a Zoom H8, and uh, he had to feed his mixer in through this thing. Now uh, something happened with the damn card. And that thing freaked out, stopped. and it just stopped. And when it did, it took all the sound down with it, oh and it was terrifying. But <laughs> Scotty Davenport, that man, jumped up, man. And took control. Scotty Davenport, head coach <laughs> of uh, head coach at Bellarmine, uh, like man, dude, he got up. He a- he asked me while Brian was like working. He was like. Uh, can I just start talking? And I said, you do whatever you want to do, man. <laughs> and so he got up, just stood right in front of the table and at the top of his lungs. And th- this was, uh, the crowd was, the crowd was great. Um, but it's like a, it's a, it's a sip and mingle of it. Yeah. So like people are mingling, they're talking. That's what they're Absolutely. there for. We're just like passing entertainment. Um, so there's a, it's a lot, it's a very loud room. I mean, it's kind of gets <laughs> up there and he just, just drops the mic. That's right. Everybody. Quiet. They shut the hell up. Quiet. <laughs> Quiet. He, you talk about somebody who can command a room. Like, Damn right. There was no microphone at all. There was 250, 300 people in this mm-hmm. room. And he just got them all in line, man. <laughs> like, that was like, that was impressive. He gave an incredibly rousing speech. And uh, then the mics came back on. And I was trying to be like, yeah, yeah. And uh, to get him back to the table. Absolutely. He go. He went to the game. That's correct. He's like, it's time going to my team. That's <laughs> Get correct. some coaching going. I can tell you though, <laughs> as of as of um, 
an unplanned situation. I think we held it very well. I think so too. Because we had about it was four minutes. Uh, for you guys, back. yeah, I'll tell you, man. If you if for, for you guys who don't know, when you're <laughs> recording or you're on TV or anybody who has not done this, um, any amount of time unplanned is a long amount of time. <laughs> and let me tell you, four minutes is an eternity of unplanned time. You know, you know the ironic thing that I just kind of made the connection of um, the last time that really happened to us uh, was during the Hemingway whiskey episode. And for a small, it just so happened to be there both times. What now, happened during that one? So remember, so that was the one that uh, we had Forrest and Jacob up and they were talking and then we went to get Clayton up. And then I said, guys, I think that uh, I didn't get any of that first part. Oh, I do remember and we were that. Drinking, I do and remember. then we had to go back and do the intro afterwards <laughs> while we were buzzed. and talk about the things we had already talked about. <laughs> and it was the funniest shit. So now I'll tell you what, that. you can tell the difference of that episode too, because it doesn't, it doesn't flow. It doesn't. It's like, cause like, why do they sound so happy right now? It's cause we were all three sheets of the wind. Oh my wind, man. God. Like we were three sheets. Of the wind. Yeah. It just God, made that connection. Good, I think that was, it's uh, I think it's was, Forrest Smallwood's fault. It is Forrest's fault. Sorry. Well, that's weird. And you know what? We actually played games with Forrest too. And I refused <laughs> for Forrest to win during the game. Um, no matter what he did, he was not going to win that game. I'm sorry, Forrest. Uh, but, you know. That's the way it goes. That's how we work. Uh, especially when you're going against a 16-year-old, you were going to lose. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind you were going to lose. Um, yeah, she was She was great. Um, she was awesome. Yeah, beautiful voice. That's Scarlet Call. Scarlet Call. I uh, yeah. can't wait for you to uh, get that up so people can hear that. Oh, because yeah. uh, she, she just, uh, man. 16 years old. Yeah, she's already awesome. open for a country star. Beautiful voice. Yep. But yeah, definitely check out Scarlet Call um, out of Owensboro. We also had Aaron Kaiser. Yep. Uh, amazing artist who actually, oh, look at the bottle right there. That uh, that mural that is done at sticker on the side, that is going to be Scotty Davenport. That's done by Aaron Kaiser. Like, how cool is that? Like, beautiful. Oh, yeah. And if you have not checked out any of Aaron Kaiser's work, it's just unreal. Uh, this was a single barrel bottle of Green River signed by Scotty Davenport. Single barrel bourbon, and it was uh, hand-selected by the Knights Club, um, but the uh, proceeds went to tornado victims, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, the, so it was an interesting story because the the first set of proceeds went to the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief, and then when they bottled it up, proceeds from those bottles are actually going to Bellarmine. That's awesome. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, they asked Way us to... Way to go, Forrest, huh? Yeah. He well, is inspirational. Um, no, he's a he's a good he's a good guy, man. He's a he's a very 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 good guy. It was nice to see those guys again, get yes. to talk to him again. It was it was really cool. I hope we get to do that a lot more this season. Um, check in on some some of our former guests. I mean, yes. uh, Dan Oliver, Tyler Watts, and those guys and us, we we formed a pretty good friendship we over have, the off yes, season. We, uh, we all rented a party bus together a few weeks back. Went to oh, a little, you remember that little dance? Yeah. Oh, do you? Because I, I, I don't remember. Know. Get, I remember getting there. I actually don't really remember getting home, like getting back. No shit. That trip back was, Look, I don't remember that. I have now decided that party <laughs> bus is the way to go. Party bus is <laughs> like for the party win. Party bus is the way to go. That was the first time we've ever done that. Oh, yeah. Um, our, our buddy Dan, like uh, we had a, it was a charity charity event that we, yep. that we went to. And uh, Dan and Tyler and uh, our buddy John and... Brian and I and our wives, we all got together and we we're like, hey, do you guys want to do this? They, we all got tickets. And Dan was like, hey, let's all have fun. And he gets a party buzz for all of us. He so sure did. He, he pulls up, he picks us up, and man. We got to the venue. Yes. And then the guy like opens the door and we were like, oh, are we here? And he was like, don't worry. He closes the door. He says, "You just let me know when you're done." And we set out in front of the place. Yeah, because we got there 15. <laughs> we got there 15 minutes early, so we just sat out in front of the place and just drank. He's like, "Just chill. It's fine." That's that's exactly what we did. We just sat there and drank, <laughs> and we stayed until man, almost what 11, 11 30, something like that. Yeah, I think so. Then we all hopped in the bus on the way back, drank on the way back. Yeah, because Tyler won I a uh, not, Tyler won a bottle. He did win a bottle. We finished. I don't even know if he brought it all home or if he finished it in the van. I can tell you when I got back in the bus, <laughs> I did not need to drink anymore. <laughs> did I listen? No. 
No, why would I do that? <laughs> why would why? Was I know there bus. was I know there was dancing in the bus though. There was standing and dancing. There was dancing on the way home. There I was rem- dancing. I, rem- I saw actually. You know what's funny? Actually. If I remember correctly, the only people dancing were you, Tyler, and John. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Dan. Were, that's that's you, Tyler, John, and Jan. <laughs> all of the right ladies <laughs> were sitting down. It was you all that what were the hell dancing. What was wrong with these guys? <laughs> so great. Uh, we had so much fun. Uh, got to raise <clears throat> a ton of money for the Fife Foundation yep. uh, Children's uh, Charity. Um, that was that was just an absolute blast. I do not know how much we raised, but I guarantee we we did really really well. Oh, I think so. Um, that yeah. was that was just so. Oh, much and you fun. had your first uh, you had your first shot at being an auctioneer. I yeah. So look, <laughs> so um, we went through and we got there, and they really didn't have a host. So she asked me if I'd host, and said, "Yeah, let's make it happen." Uh, the sound guy. That's it. What I'm also learning is always bring your own sound guy and bring your own equipment because the sound guy. <laughs> this thing was not good. Said, um, you got to hold the microphone like down here. Yeah, else. man, it was it was so odd, and you know they had a live band after who brought their own sound guy, and they sounded they sounded fantastic, incredible. Like that band was incredible. Yeah. Me talking on the microphone sounded awful. Right. Um, so I had to have like Brian go through and like try to tell me where to hold the microphone, and it was <laughs> it just did not work out well. But then I was an auctioneer. <laughs> that's what you were I've never been an auctioneer before <laughs> but I was then oh my lord and I made it happen <laughs> I don't know how much I, I don't know how much I got I really wasn't paying much attention to what I was doing <laughs> you were drinking on a bus <laughs> before we got to the event oh yeah if I would have oh, known that we were idea. gonna uh, be auctioneers <laughs> and hosts I may have controlled myself a little bit more <laughs> but I didn't uh, so that's what you got. That's <laughs> all right. I'm, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a fun, fun time. I really, uh, I really thought it still went over really well for, for what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, absolutely. But I will say it taught me a lot of how to fill some space. Um, if you're not put into those type of situations, you'll never learn. All right. And I would like to think, uh, you know, two years ago before I felt really comfortable being on microphones uh-huh. and being in front of people. That situation, <clears throat> there's no chance I would have said yes. Like if they would come up and be like, "Hey, I need you to host. Well, do you care to host this thing?" Like, yes, right I now. care. I'm not doing that. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I mean, I, ideally, when we prep our shows and stuff like that, we do a lot of a lot of research and we do a lot of yeah. prep, and that's how you make something quality. Uh, we we have a firm belief in that. Um, I think that uh, I heard once, and I've always had this kind of rule of thumb for every hour that you're going to be on stage performing Mm -hmm. should be three hours of prep. Yeah. Makes Um, sense. So that's like what I like to usually do. I just like read or listen or um, anything like that. So going into these last two situations where we really didn't have, like we didn't really control the show. um, I just learned a new skill of how to try to deal with that. Right. Am I perfect? No. God, no, (laughs) not even a little bit, but I can tell you it was, uh, it was much different than what it, what it would have been two years ago. I probably yeah. would have just like stopped talking and like froze. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, just, well, what do, I, what, do I do? what do I do? I mean, and here's, you can't, you can't worry for anybody that's listening or, or like uh, afraid to talk in front of people or afraid to do something in front of people. First off, the only person who knows it's going to mess up is you. Like uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody has any knows. idea what you're, so <laughs> what they, you're going to do. I have no idea what they're going to do. And here's the thing. Like, don't take it so seriously, man. Yeah. Just don't take yourself seriously. Have fun with it. Um, I think the best <clears throat> best thing that I think you and I have maybe learned over doing this and doing some live shows is you have to be self-effacing. Uh, you have to make fun of yourself. Oh, yeah. You have to know how to take a joke. Um, you got to learn how to read your guests and your audience where if they're feeling uncomfortable, yep. <clears throat> make you right. the attention. Um but that that's what I'd like to think that uh, we've learned over this last uh, yeah, I mean, year or so. Uh, this. I always perform like I perform music, but performing spoken word is a lot different than performing music. I mean, you, you can you can hide behind a guitar a bit, but when it's just the microphone and your voice, like it's different. And like I've learned, and the only thing people are gonna know when you mess up there more than anything is because they know the song, <laughs> right? Like and like if you're doing covers, yeah, they know the song, sure. they know roughly yeah, right. where the chords should be and if you jack it up and that that probably be a little yeah that's why i did originals because then they wouldn't know <laughs> you had no idea uh, <laughs> they have no idea but it's incredible how much i've learned over the year that we've been doing this show and, and taking it out live and, mm-hmm. and doing things like that and you do you learn so much about just who you are and how you respond to certain 
certain things. Yes. I mean, um, honestly, and, and some I think technical you, stuff. I mean, I've learned a lot of technical stuff, but I'm talking more just like I think you can, in performing. I think you surprise yourself. Yeah, like you've learned how to deal with uncomfortable situations um, where hopefully, hopefully the audience um, <laughs> isn't is still with you. Yeah, as best that you can. I mean, think of it this way: Ian Summerholder and Paul Wesley. Nobody wanted to hear us. I tell you what, that that could have been a little terrifying, but I felt I felt good. Dude, like, the first time I ever interviewed them, uh, uh, I don't know if I've ever told this story on the show before. So uh, I did it two years ago. It was the first time uh-huh. I interviewed them live. Yeah, I did a show right before them. Okay, so it was this was at Bourbon and Beyond uh-huh. uh, two years ago. I did a show right before them. Which you know, it's like thirty people out there. I was fine. Right. I didn't even have to talk much. Like, right. uh, the only reason that people were even out there is because they were tasting. Like that was yeah. it. It was it was cake. Talking it was like talking into a room like for work. Right. No difference. So I I get off stage. I'm fine. I'm getting a little nervous just because of the the event and the guys. And I've already met them at this time. We've already talked, so I feel cool with them. Uh-huh. I'm like still trying to over prep, and I've learned that you can't <laughs> do that anymore. Like do your prep way before you get yeah. there. You don't need to sit there and try to read your no, books it's and no stuff good like that. Anyway. It doesn't do. Yeah. It. You're not retaining it. So uh, I'm I'm at this point like still trying to read my notes and like trying to go through, and I'm like so nervous in my head of like what I'm doing. I, I don't do any of that anymore, but. I remember going up after the culinary stage goes off and I have to do just like a quick maintenance announcement of like what's going to happen. Uh-huh. And so if you know the Bourbon and Beyond stage, there's like this just this door, like just a regular door. So it's like walking out of a room. Okay. And there's a gap. The door doesn't meet the jams. So there's a little gap so you can kind of see directly through it. Sure. So I walk over and again, I'm only used to like talking like 30 people. <laughs> yeah. So I'll look through and I see <laughs> it's a C. It was a sea of people. It was a sea. <laughs> it was a sea of people. And this was instantaneously, just like at this moment, this is the <laughs> largest group of people I have ever yeah. spoken to. I, easily a thousand people. Yeah. Maybe more. I mean, it went all the way back to the back. It did. It was un, It was unreal. So my stomach drops, Brian. <laughs> stomach <laughs> drops. Like it just, it was like a rock. And I'm like, oh my God. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Holy crap. Like, I'm getting nervous. I'm maybe like, I, I guarantee my hands were sweaty. I remember like just being really, really nervous. And the all I took, all I tell myself was like, I can't, I have to go. Right. Like, I can't leave. No. Like, I can't just like not do <laughs> Doesn't this. Doesn't work like that. Like, there is, there is no calling out <laughs> sick from this job. I'm already there. I've already done one. I can't just now get sick. Oh, so, coronavirus. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, just hit me. Uh, no, well, like Corona was acting up. <laughs> so um, I go through, and what I just tell myself in my head, and this is this is actually I think from this moment is where I've become so comfortable from that. I just tell myself in my head is like, just go out and grab the microphone and just start talking. Yeah, just talk. Like, yeah, I, I it's almost everything that I've practiced in my <laughs> head. It all wiped clean. There was nothing there, dude. It was all gone. It's like just grab and just go. And so I grab the microphone. Nobody has any idea who I am. Like, <laughs> right? Like, just there's no. Like, I walk out of the door, and this is to start it all. Nobody knows. Nobody knows anything. <laughs> no care. They're like, the, <laughs> like, who the fuck is this dude getting up on stage? And so I grab the microphone, and nobody does anything. <laughs> and so I immediately say, "All right," uh, I said, "Does everybody know what we're up here for?" And I just get everybody to scream. Right. And get loud and instantly calm fell over me. Yeah. I'm like, all right, the audience, and again, nobody gives a crap that I am there. <laughs> like nobody gives a crap. I could have gone up there and just said gibberish, like just straight <laughs> gibberish. And I'm not sure anybody would know as long as I said the words Ian and Paul, um, as long as those words were said, we were good. Um, but man, as soon as they came on, uh, the ladies just lost their minds. Um, but I'll tell you, those two, those those two guys are, <laughs> those two guys are awesome. But yeah, man, it was a it was a really good time. But uh, you know, you learn you learn some life lessons. Just yeah. uh, here's the other thing, man. Just go after it. Just go. Just go do it. That's that's my motto. Just go do it. Just go do it. I know learn. that uh, this year when. Uh, when we sat at that table, I looked out there. It was just like you said. There was endless people, 
because we had already done. Was that your first time? Because I mean, you've performed for years. I mean, you've played live music and stuff like that for years. Yeah, but, but never that, in front of a Vampire Diaries. Yeah, crowd. like that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Like talking like a smattering of people in this dark bar. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any? Because that was your first time really going on that big uh-huh. that that type of stage. Right. Um, did you have how? Did you have nerves going up there? It was a little nerve wracking at first because it's just you got to stick on schedule. Yes. I mean that's that's the most nerve wracking part to me is sticking on schedule, and so people are looking for me. Where where yeah where yeah how can we get all this stuff going? And uh, it was hectic. Um, so then you sit there and then the crowd's out there. And so I kind of had a different kind of approach because I had to already be out there kind of setting everything up yeah. so I could see them kind of filtering in. But from, the, I think it was like 10 minutes that I walked back to talk to Ian and Paul, that place filled up like, I mean, it wasn't even close to that. Those people knew to come over there during during that specific time. It was insane. I've, I mean, it was, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> But it's it's a uh, it feels so good, um, especially just like when you get them going and um, like uh, that's we we've talked many times. We love doing live shows. That's our favorite thing to do. Like we'd rather we, we would rather do a live <laughs> show than sit in here and record. Oh yeah, um, because we like to play off the audience and stuff like that and get people excited and, and just that. we almost had a baseball bat showdown. Remember? He, yes, uh, he gave them Louisville Sluggers. I did. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been fun. Um, they're just, they're great, great guys. Um, I, c- I can't appreciate those guys enough. And on top of it, they make some amazing whiskey. Look at this. It is quite good. Right here. Brothers Bond. Oh, nice. Look at that. Really neat bottle there. And look, look, look at that. For all of you, uh, for all you vampire diary nuts out there, that is, uh, it's, uh, Ian wrote me that. That was the very first time. Um, I actually had COVID. Uh, when I first had my opportunity to meet him, and then he ended up signing this bottle to me, and I think it says Chris Blanford, you rock man. <laughs> Chris by, Blanford, you rock man. But Mr. Ian Summerholder, and here's what's awesome about us: you can see that we always drink our whiskey. I yeah, opened look at an, that bottle. Opened an autographed bottle of Brothers Bond. Beautiful, um, but half empty. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking the other day, Brian. Uh, you know, I have, I have just on this bar that we have here that that the audience can see i have probably over 900 bottles no right shit here. yeah uh <laughs> it's a pain in the ass when i had to dust them wow. but i can tell you uh, i was thinking like is there any bottle up here I wouldn't open and i think i have one and it would be this this uh this blackened bottle up here uh-huh. oh yeah bottle that is signed by the whole entire band of metallic that's right and uh, the late great Dave Pickerel, master yes. distiller of that company, and I was like, that might be the only bottle up here I wouldn't open with somebody, unless actually, let me take it back. Ooh, if Metallica shows up here, <laughs> right? <laughs> if Metallica wants to be on the show, I'll open. Hey, that you with got you. it. Absolutely, open that with you. Zero problems. Um, Have a little Brothers <laughs> Bond whiskey right here. There we go. See, it's good. Oh, it's good whiskey, you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it's a it, this is this eighty proof like entry level uh, whiskey. I think it's a great introductory whiskey um, of like uh, you're wanting to cut your teeth on it. But they also have some like incredible rye whiskey. Oh also. yeah, I like that rye a lot. Yeah, we we have a we have a bottle around here somewhere, and then they got the barrel strength. So, um, <clears throat> getting into whiskey for the first time, I think it doesn't get much better than this eighty proof uh, brother brothers bond. Cut your teeth on it. That's right. And, uh, you know, uh, develop into the problem that you see behind me. I, you know, I said one time to somebody I was asking, I, I sent a picture. They wanted to see my bourbon wall and I sent it to him. And I said, uh, you know, I, I either have a problem or a passion. And then he wrote back. He was like, I think you have a problem and I can help you with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a problem. I have yeah. a solution. This is, this is, this, <laughs> these are, these are my friends. Like, they have zero, they will always help. When you have a problem with whiskey, oh lord, it'll always help every time. Um, we would like to get some feedback from the listeners out there, uh, just on some things that you would might like to uh, have us do on the show. You know, what are some things you like? What are some things you dislike? Talk to the people, hey, Chris. Tell hey, them to. Hey, nothing weird. 
it, well, not well, if you want it to be weird, it's not, fine. But you know, too it's, weird. It's no guarantee that yeah. any of it's going to happen. Yeah, I'll tell you, man. Um, I, I would say anybody, let us know what you're you're you would like us to talk about or um, what you want to hear. We had some ideas of like reaction stuff. We also wanted to go into maybe doing um, getting some deeper dives into like uh, beer and tequilas. Um, definitely some more wines. I yeah. absolutely love wine. Uh, maybe we'll maybe uh, you know what we should do. We should bring back <clears throat> Christian. Christian Huber. And oh, yeah. Go through um to do wine. <clears throat> go through and just just talk wine, not yeah. talk whiskey and just oh. talk wine. So that maybe that'll be fun. Uh maybe some local wineries. Um if you guys want us to reach out and state wise, anything like that, yeah. just whatever you all want to see, please let us know. We would love to uh we want to evolve this show with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh what yeah. do you want to see more of? Yeah. What do you want to see less of? Brian or Chris. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to see less of anything. Yeah. It's always more. Yeah, it's always always more, always more whiskey. Uh what? but you know, um you know, we maybe have some ideas for some coffee stuff this year. And mm. uh, you know, I think the show will always, always, always center around beverage. Uh because it's just uh, it's one one of the, our things. I think well, any type of beverage just draws the conversation. You know, that's right. Every drink tells a story. That's right. That's right. Every drink tells a story, <laughs> um, and that that's anything. Coffee to wine to I don't know alcoholic water. Or, uh, <laughs> who knows? Everybody, everything. Um, yeah, we got uh, we we just have so many great uh, ideas coming up, and uh, I'm, I can't wait to share some with you. Um, yeah, hit us up at mailbag at firkinpodcast.com or yep. come over to Instagram, find us at Firkin Podcast, come to YouTube, mm-hmm. leave some comments and shit. Please check out the whiskey series, uh, speaker series I have coming up at number 15. Um, that That's awesome. Uh, pretty much every month. Uh, also, make sure that you're uh, just following us on Instagram, especially mine. I'll tell you what, that what I have learned over trying to do this, Brian, is that social media is quite possibly the hardest thing in the world to keep up with. It is. Um, it is. Annoying. It's especially to keep up with your own <laughs> and let alone a business one. Right. Um, so sometimes you'll just see me kind of post on the Instagram, on, on our, on my Instagram, uh, have a little bit more, uh, gets it out there a little faster. <laughs> but please follow me on Instagram. It's Kroger Chris Picks. Uh, on Instagram, you can find uh, all kinds of interesting info that we'll post and oh, yeah. some clips of videos, but definitely YouTube, you want to go to that. In fact, here's Here's what we'll do. We're going to tie in a little giveaway to pull in some comments and whatnot. Cool. What are we giving away? So we're going to give away a Firkin prize pack. Ah, what is in the Firkin prize pack? So in the Firkin prize pack, you get a t-shirt, a mug, a sticker, and your very own, uh, what do they call it, sample size pack of Dano seasoning? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a a variety pack. So we have a three-pack variety pack. It's got the Chipotle. It's not sample size. Yeah, it's not (laughs) sample size. They're real. They're actual real bottles. Um, Yeah, we got the (laughs) Chipotle, we got the spicy, and we have the original. Uh, um, uh, Those are are our favorite spices. Those are also uh, sponsors of our show, so you make sure you get that. We also got, this is the mug that he's talking about. Like, Look how cool that mug is. Look at that mug. This is a campfire mug. It is my favorite mug. Get one of those for yourself right there. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm going to send you a Firkin T-shirt yeah, too. It's uh, awesome. We do not have our Firkin T-shirts on. Not today. But, uh, they. It, it's pretty easy. It's that logo. So it's a running podcast. I'm just saying. Um, and so that yeah. Uh, let's let's go through. What's the what, what do they have to do? Uh, so you're going to have to go to FirkinPodcast.com/slash/giveaways/slash/season two, and that's where you're going to find our season two prize pack. I'm going to give everybody until April twentieth, April twentieth. That is. <laughs> you know what that is. That's 420. Uh, I do. That's right. I do. I do. Uh, 420. Yeah. If you know what that is, you know what that is. Uh, so, no, that'll be fun. Please go through and uh, follow us to uh, win this great prize package. Right. And again, follow us to get uh, all kinds of giveaways that we got going on this year. Uh, I think that's it. Man, I tell you what, it's just good to be back. It is good to be back. I and bet you the know, people have missed us. Have you missed us? <laughs> I understand if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you guys so much for uh listening to our um like uh what do we want to call this episode? This is gonna be Yeah, I don't know. Welcome back, Connor. The, the shit that <laughs> flies out of our mouth episode. <laughs> Uh, yes, but I'll tell you what, we do have to go because we are going to the Bourbon Classic tonight to, to go and taste some great whiskey. So if you're there, we hope to see you. And uh, Brian, if you got nothing else, why don't we close out this very special episode of the Season 2 Comeback? I love it. 
Yes, thanks to our listeners for tuning in. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Firkin Podcast. Send questions or comments to mailbag at firkinpodcast.com and visit our Patreon to become a founding member at patreon.com slash Podcast. Subscribe and rate us on your podcast platform of choice and make sure to share it with a friend. Until next time, let's raise a glass to the stories behind the drinks. Cheers. Cheers.